Hi guys, Mr. Holmes here, getting ready to bring to you guys Chapter 3, Section 2, Characteristics of Quadratic Functions. In this section, you guys will be learning how to determine what is the vertex form for a quadratic function, what is the standard form for a quadratic function, how to go from vertex to standard and how to go from standard to vertex, how to find the axis of symmetry, how to use the axis of symmetry to find the vertex form, excuse me, to find the vertex, and how to find the domain and range, and how to determine whether a function is increasing and where it is decreasing. Alright? So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with Chapter 3, Section 2, Characteristics of Quadratic Functions. Now, in this section, what I would like to do first is introduce you to you guys what is the standard form for a quadratic function. All right, St the standard form for a quadratic function, and I'm going to put s of x. The only reason I'm putting s of x is because the s, I'm just letting it represent the word standard, but the s is simply the name of a function. That's it. All right, so the standard form for a quadratic function is a of it's going to be a times x squared plus bx plus c. That's the standard form for a quadratic function. Now, the vertex form, I will put v of x. The vertex form for a quadratic function is simply a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. This is called my vertex form for a quadratic function. Feel free to pause this video and jot this information down. All right, and after you jot this information down, then we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, one thing that I really enjoy about the vertex form for a quadratic, for a quadratic function, it's easy to identify what is the axis of symmetry as well as the vertex. Now, since I'm using the word axis of symmetry, let me write this here down here. Axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry is simply a line that will divide this quadratic function into two congruent halves. It passes directly through the vertex. Okay. That I have for you guys here is an example of a quadratic function. Here's the graph. This blue line actually represents my axis of symmetry. All right, that blue line goes directly through the vertex of this of this quadratic function. All right, so this blue line is a line, and because it's a line, all lines have an equation. All right, so when you get ready to identify your axis of symmetry, you cannot simply put a number, but instead you will write an equation. Now, with that being said, my axis of symmetry is easily identifiable from vertex form because my axis of symmetry will be x is equal to whatever my h value is. Whatever that h value is in vertex form, that's my equation for axis of symmetry. Just make sure that when you write your answer, your answer is not a number, but instead it's an equation. All right? So that's my axis of symmetry. My vertex from ver my vertex from vertex form is also easily identifiable because my vertex is whatever my h value is comma whatever my k value is 
It's just that simple. There's no more thought to be put into it. All right? Only thing I want you to keep in mind is that when you're looking in vertex form, everything in the inside, it appears opposite of what it actually is. That means if you see, for instance, x is equal to, excuse me, x minus 3 inside of parentheses, my h value is not negative 3 because the negative is part of the equation. My h value in this case is simply 3. All right, so for here, my axis of symmetry will simply be 3, not negative 3. All right, so again, everything in the inside of the parentheses actually looks opposite of what it really is. At this time, I'm going to ask that you go ahead and pause the video, jot this information down. Once you're done, go ahead and unpause the video, and we're going to go ahead and get started. What I want to do next is I want to introduce you guys something real simple, an equation in vertex form. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from vertex form to standard form. So here we go. I'm going to keep this up here for the time being, and I'm going to try to stay within this frame, all right? So what I want to do next is I want to go from vertex form to standard form from uh, given an equation. So let's do this here, f of x is equal to 3 times x plus 2 squared plus 1. The first thing I'm going to do is practice going from vertex form to standard form. So this here is vertex form. And I'm going to go from vertex to standard. All right, and the way that we would do this is just simplify this function. What I mean when I say simplify it is, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to square my binomial first, then I'm going to multiply it times 3, and then lastly I'm going to simply combine like terms, and the answer I get is my new equation written in standard form. So what I mean when I say that is, I'm going to take... Let me write my final answer in red, but for now I'm going to take and I'm going to keep my three parentheses. I'm going to square my binomial on the outside I'm going to have plus one. Now to get what's inside of my parentheses here, I'm going to have to take this binomial, x plus two, and I'm going to have to square it. Alright? And I'll show you that work here. And I'm going to show you using the box method. So I'm going to take my x and my positive 2, and I'm going to do x plus 2. This is how we use Punnett square to square a binomial. Everywhere a column and a row meets is where I will multiply. So in this case, x times x will give me x squared. 2 times x will give me 2x. x times 2 will give me 2x. And lastly, 2 times 2 will give me a positive 4. So please understand, whenever you are filling in Punnett square, you are to use multiplication. When you are draining out to get our final answer, we use addition. So in this case here, we're only going to combine like terms. So my only like terms I have is 2x and 2x. My two terms here are not like terms, so they will pour out as x squared, and I combine using addition only, 2x plus 2x, I will get a positive 4x. My positive 4 here, I'm simply going to bring it out as plus 4. And now my trinomial, I have received after I square my binomial, I will put inside these parentheses. So this is simply x squared plus 4x plus 4. So now I got my trinomial after I square my binomial. Now it's time to use the distributive property. Alright, so I'm going to multiply each one of my terms times 3 and when I do this I will get rid of the parentheses. Alright, so 3 times x squared will give me 3x squared. 3 times a positive 4x will give me a positive 
12x. 3 times a positive 4 will give me a positive 12. And I'm simply going to bring down my plus 1. The last thing I would do here to have this in standard form is to combine my like terms. Everything else will come straight down. When I write this in standard form, my x squared will be first, my x will be second, and my constant will be last. So now what I have is my standard form. My standard form for my equation now is here, and I'm going to put s of x because it's standard form. f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 12x plus 13. And this is how we go from vertex form to standard form. What I would like for you to do now is pause this video, jot this information down, and ask yourself, what is exactly the same from my vertex form to my standard form? Once you guys unpause this video, I'll give you the answer. By now, you guys should be unpausing the video, and what you should have recognized is that the value for A in my vertex form and the value for A in my standard form were exactly the same number. So a quick note that you guys should jot down, that you must jot down, and that's, that you must know, is that no matter whether you're going from vertex form to standard form, the value of A should stay the same. Now, with that being the case, I am now going to erase this information here. And what I'm going to do is write my standard form with s of x equals 3 times x squared plus 12x plus 13. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the axis of symmetry. I'm about to show you guys now how to find the axis of symmetry from the standard form as well as how to find the vertex from standard form and lastly how to determine or uh, uh, how to discover the vertex form. Alright, so we're going to find the axis of symmetry first. Axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry in this case uh, in all cases, is the finding is negative of whatever my b value is divided by 2 times the value for a. Alright, now what I would like for you guys to know is that a is equal to 3, b is equal to 12 and C is equal to 13. So when I'm looking for my equation to find my axis of symmetry, I simply will put negative B, 